Philosophy of Hinduism by Baba Sahib Ambedkar Introduction Philosophy of Hinduism 2 Part 1 This is a long detour, but it was a necessary preliminary to any inquiry into the main question. However, when one begins the inquiry, one meets with an initial difficulty. The Hindu is not prepared to face the inquiry. He either argues that religion is of no importance or he takes shelter behind the view, fostered by the study of comparative religion, that all religions are good. There is no doubt that both these views are mistaken and untenable. Religion as a social force cannot be ignored. Religion has been aptly described by Herbert Spencer as the weft which everywhere crosses the warp of history. This is true of every society. But religion has not only crossed everywhere the warp of Indian history, it forms the warp and woof of the Hindu mind. The life of the Hindu is regulated by religion at every moment of his life. It orders him how, during life, he should conduct himself, and how on death his body shall be disposed of. It tells him how and when he shall indulge in his sexual impulses. It tells him what ceremonies are to be performed when a child is born, how he should name, how he should cut the hair on his head, how he should perform its first feeding. It tells him what occupation he can take to, what women he should marry. It tells him who he should dine with and what food he should eat, what vegetables are lawful and what are forbidden. It tells how he should spend his day, how many times he should eat, how many times he should pray. There is no act of the Hindu which is not covered or ordained by religion. It seems strange that the educated Hindus should come to look upon it as though it was a matter of indifference. The End